You've probably heard it said that a house is only as good as its foundations. When you're building a tiny house, that's no different. Only the foundations that it's on is actually the trailer. Today, I'm here with Ian from Mumford Industries talking about trailer design and what makes our custom designed trailer a bit special. Yeah, the advantages to having a trailer custom built for a tiny house is that the chassis is designed to receive the bottom plate to mount the walls onto. Um, it's designed to transpose the weight of the walls and therefore the roof as well uh, down to the frame into the suspension and onto the road is a little different to any other um, type of device that you're transporting like your common domestic garden trailer that you put on a load sits on the floor and that is supported by steel across its width and onto the onto the ground via the suspension um, with a tiny house it's a little different to that because there's not a lot of load on the floor, but there is a lot of load at the perimeter of the walls that sit there. Um, and so your transfer of load and therefore the strength of the chassis is, is inverted. It's got to come in from the outside instead of out from the inside. You're limited to three and a half thousand kilos. Um, any trailer that's over 2,000 kilos um, must have brakes. Um, when you get over 2,500 kilos it must have an automatic breakaway system so those will have to be considered in the overall design when you're, when you're working with it. Aluminium itself is good for some things not so good for others um, it's, it's inherently very light it's not very strong so you have to make it thicker to achieve the same weight capacities um, it's also quite brittle and that flexing causes stress um, and cracking. So there are a number of boat trailers in particular that are built in aluminium because they handle the salt water very well, but, um, but they do get stress fractures and things like that in time. Worse with steel, steel is strong, it's fairly flexible. What it doesn't have is um, protection from the elements, it does rust, and that's where the galvanizing process looks after that. Commercial grade tyres are, are essential. They handle up to about 900 kilos per tyre on a good commercial tyre, which is around about three times what an ordinary car tyre will handle. And the pressures can be higher accordingly. Um, so that's critical. You can't just go to a tyre shop and replace your tiny house tyre with what's on the shelf. Um, it's going to need to be a commercial or a light truck tyre, it's called. Okay, we're using the maximum available width um, for this. Um, we run the chassis at 2400 millimetres wide. Uh, that allows for the cladding that's on the outside of the wall. So the wall frame will be 2400 from side to side. Um, but there will be the cladding on the outside of that wall. And then there might be other fittings like window uh, flashings and things like that, which do protrude and they must not protrude beyond the 2500 so which gives you 50 millimeters to, uh, to to add on either side and that's it so, so the trailer basically is is the floor and the and, and the underframe uh, the insulation underneath will be fitted inside the frame um, because that's space that is available um, so the object is to get the floor as low to the ground as possible um, utilizing every little bit of space that that can be utilised. We have the mud guards and the wheels and tyres within the uh, perimeter that is, that is the 2400 as well. So um, that will take up some of the floor space and hopefully that can be hidden with cupboards and other internal bits and pieces that, uh, that the design will have. But by doing that, we keep the walls as far out as we possibly can and, uh, and maximise what is internal space. There's nothing that can't be done, um, I never say never, but uh, there are some issues with doing that. One is you're limited to size because your car, your car transporter is generally only about four and a half metres long um, and generally the guards are outside. But the, the other issue is the transfer of load. A car transporter is designed to take the weight of a load in the middle and move it out. So a car transporter would have to be 
considerably re-engineered to handle having the walls um, right up at the perimeter um, to take the weight and bring it back into the middle. So essentially a car transporter is too strong in the middle where it's not necessary and not strong enough at the outside. Yeah. So having said that, it, it may be a cheap option, but it does need to be um, re-engineered, altered, so that it will do the job. What we do here at Monoway is a little different to other trailer manufacturers uh, in that we don't do high volume. We tailor what we do for specific clients in, in the manufacture of all trailers. Most of what we do is for uh, commercial tradesmen, um, where it could be farmers, builders, roofing contractors, um, as well as high fleet owners. Uh, we tailor everything to suit what they need. Um, it does cost a little more, but at the end of the day, you get exactly what you need, what you want, and a good quality lasting product.